Hi everyone, this is Lada from astrolada.com and I'm here to do your July 2018 horoscopes together with Mila, Mila Striman. Say hi Mila. She's been my source of strength because the July horoscopes 2018 and August, these are the two most extreme months of 2018. Guys, lives will be transformed. Fates will take a new direction. Changes on an epochal way because we have two huge eclipses happening. And we also are going to, hey Mila, and we have Mars retrograde and Mercury going retrograde. I would walk you through all of this. I just wanted you first to have some fun, see Mila to start on a positive tone and we will end also on a positive note talking about Jupiter going direct and how you can benefit from that but be prepared for one of the most intense exciting months possibly also the most difficult months July and August together. I'm just gonna drop Mila to my mom. Hey say bye Mila bye. Wish everyone luck during the eclipses. Wish them luck to have the best results possible. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. And why are these months, especially July and August, so crazy? Well, people who are yearning for a change, for a big change in their life, people that want to totally transform their thinking and certain areas of their lives, they might actually have a blast this month and consider it one of the most powerful and one of the most positive experiences of their life, but eclipses always bring some crisis of a, of a sort, you know. And eclipses, and I'm making the same intro for everyone, for all the 12 signs. I want you to listen to it because it gives us a lot of insights. And then I'll speak specifically how it affects each of the 12 signs. But before I start, I just wanted to tell you that on the 8th of July, we have a webinar with Nikola Stojanovic on what in astrology gives the richest people. Nikola Stojanovic is a favorite of many of you so i'm looking forward to have you on that webinar preceding the eclipses and the first eclipse is a solar eclipse in july and the 11th uh, which is caused together by rahu rahu is the north node of the sun and eclipses are about karmic events Things that you have like a contract about, uh, in pre, you know, even before you're born, the big events that happen in our life, the big transformations of consciousness, the big leaps to the next level. And sometimes, often it happens through crisis because only big transformation comes through crisis. This is the nature of humans. Very few humans are inspired towards change because everything is okay and they're inspired to make it even better or to grow spiritually. The solar eclipse is weaker though. The solar eclipse is weaker than the lunar eclipse that follows. But the whole July, I'll be more careful about starting things like buying properties or signing contracts or, you know, uh, because especially a few days before and after an eclipse, it's the light is hidden. The light of the sun or the moon are hidden. And it means that there is a lot of confusion. Uh, the the uh, eclipses act as portals for invisible forces to come and create chaos and out of this chaos, new beginnings and changes can build. But you don't want to make big decisions, especially when it comes to the second eclipse, the lunar eclipse, which is the strongest in 120 years eclipse. The lunar, the most strong lunar eclipse in 120 years uh, that is closest to Earth. Uh, and it's going to be seen in most of Africa, Europe, and uh, in Asia as well. Extremely powerful eclipse. I would advise you a week before this eclipse and a week after the July the 27th. And then there is another eclipse in August. This summer, there are three eclipses in a row, guys. Very karmic events are about to happen. And uh, very fated events. I mean, things that happen on eclipses are people getting pregnant, birth of babies, uh, uh, you know, things that... And, and usually within the month of the eclipse. You can be feel it a month before, a month after, sometimes even two months after. But this is when our lives turn around. And some eclipses take from us because they want to teach us about detachment. That will be the lunar eclipse. It will be about losing things, letting go of things. And some eclipses give us things so we can further incarnate and so we can fulfill certain desires that we have because the purpose of the eclipses is our spiritual and soul evolution. Uh, and the evolution of the soul happens by first, there are two ways that it happens. That our desires that we have are fulfilled so we realize that we've been chasing an illusion. For example, you really want to be rich or you really want to have that guy or you really want, you've all you wanted, always wanted was to have a child. All you always wanted was to have this business. And Raku eclipses, which is the first one, the solar eclipse, gives us those things. And once we have them, we realize that it's an illusion, that it does not 
uh, is did not fu fully create what happiness is for us. So we're still searching inside. But Rahu gives. So in Western astrology, we tend to like Rahu because it's a eclipse. Uh, 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 when Rahu is involved in an eclipse, we receive things, we get things. And usually, again, though, they're preceded by some crisis because a big change and big transformation always involves some kind of crisis. Uh, and sudden, it's usually very surprising when eclipses come, but usually it's something that you've had to do for a long time, but you've been postponing or you didn't have the willpower. And now uh, other sources, other powers take over and start acting through you. And, you know, like eclipses bring things to um, culmination, so to speak. And maybe you've wanted something for a long time and this Rahu eclipse now can give it to you, but it might be again preceded by some kind of crisis, but it will be some kind of new beginnings because solar eclipse is when the sun and the moon are together, creation of something new, female and male, polarities are joining together to create new life. But because of Rahu, which is considered a demonic influence, it happens through some kind of shakeup in our life. You know, and but this is when it, it's contracted. It's it's what had to happen. There were two eclipses on my moon in the last year and a half, and the moon is motherhood, and I got pregnant both times, uh, maybe a month before, a month after. But usually, the eclipses it doesn't mean it will happen on the 11th of July. It, it means that if something new comes into your life, it might come a month before or a couple of months after. But the eclipses are like those beacons that say that something fated is going to happen in your life. And as I said, the Rahu eclipse, the first one, brings something through crisis, sudden new beginnings, uh, transformations, because Rahu and Ketu that cause the eclipses, the south and lunar, the north and uh, south lunar nodes of the moon, the mythology about them is that they were uh, Nagas which is snakes, dragon. There were a dragon that was cut in two. And uh, the, you know, the symbology of dragons is that they shed their skin and snakes as well for transformation. So the big thing to remember about eclipses is big transformations and they're never easy. It means about the light is hidden for a little bit. So it's almost like <clears throat> you might feel like something like a metaphorical death of some sort, a death of, of a part of your life, a death of an old part of you, but so that again the sun or the moon can be reborn when the darkness of the eclipse is removed from them and because chaos ensues first of some sort before again the the king and the queen the sun and the moon can take reign over your life and make it run according to you know a kind of more predictable uh, and uh, uh, normal patterns but while around the eclipse a couple of months around i would say some of you would feel it already from june some would feel it into august as well but July is the most intense. There is this darkening. Uh, people like start to get confused or to change direction in their life. They get sudden changes and transformations are starting to happen. And while it's dark, there are a lot of fears. And we're like, what does the future hold? Rahu eclipses prepares for the future. They bring new karma. And again, it can bring a lot of fears. When I got pregnant both times, I was full of fears, you know. It's a crisis on the mentality, even if it gives you something. It's a crisis on your whole lifestyle, on your whole um, expectation for whatever you wanted for yourself. And then the, there's something new that comes that is fated that's totally going to change your life. So this rapid eclipse on the July the 11th will bring something like that. It gives things... Uh, it gives uh, transformations, but uh, through some kind of sudden crisis, uh, new karma is created, then strong passions. Rahu is the mouth of the dragon. The dragon has two parts, Rahu and Ketu. The mouth of the dragon is Rahu. It's insatiable. It's something that we want to grab from life more and more. So often, sometimes people can even fall in love around eclipses, and especially Rahu eclipses, in a crazy way that they lose their mind. And because of that, their whole life transforms and they can do something passionate and intense that's almost like eclipse of the mind. You know, the sun is our conscious ability to make conscious choices. Uh, and Rahu darkens that. The eclipse happens on the sun, so you kind of lose your mind over some with strong passions and stuff like that while the next eclipse july 27th lunar eclipse is um, as i said the strongest eclipse is going to be seen especially if you're in the path of the eclipse if you are able to see that eclipse your life will definitely be so strongly impacted but for the whole of the world i warn you quite an intense eclipse it's conjunct mars and mars is retrograde mars is a very violent star when it's retrograde it's much closer to earth so and ketu means past life when an eclipse 
involves Ketu, it's about past lifetimes or past karma. Something from the past and especially that creates a lot of frustration or angry reaction on us. So kind of a old slumbering karma of anger can come to the surface during that time, a week before or a whole month after that. I would say the whole month you know, uh, this is active, uh, and you can feel like strong, intense emotions, and also it has a square to Uranus, the eclipse, by the way, and Uranus and Mars ultimately want to give freedom and liberation to a person from something, they make you so angry about something, Mars especially retrograde, you're like, I can no longer tolerate that, there's so much like pent up fire that is starting like volcano to erupt, be careful not to erupt and lose your minds again, lose your heads, when the, when the moon is eclipsed, uh, the weeks before and after, we can do crazy stuff that we regret. I mean, the last time the moon was, uh, Mars was with Keto, um, there were quite some famous um, suicides of uh, Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade on the exact day. So people can lose their mind, and this time is much more powerful because Mars is retrograde, so much closer to Earth, much more intense. The influences are way more karmic. It's bringing anger, pain, Mars is all those things, from the very bottom of your soul, from past lifetimes, from earlier periods in your life, something from the past, it rules the past, this kind of anger and this pain is going to erupt now on the surface, but the ultimate goal of Keto Eclipses is to release it, to release that anger, or to use that anger to detach yourself from something from the past that is no longer necessary in your life, so there will be powerful endings, Losing something, Ketu is about letting go of something, I don't know if you see it well here, but letting go of something, Ketu is about, is the tail of the dragon, while Rahu takes something, that's why we usually get something in life during Rahu eclipses, or around the months around it, in Ketu eclipses we let go of something, is the tail where you excrete you know, so where old karma, the baggage, we have, we have, we all carry a lot of baggage with us, and that's key to the karma, and we need to travel lightly on our path, uh, and when the baggage becomes too much, it's like we can't move forward, but we're so afraid to lose something, we're so afraid to lose a relationship, we're so afraid to lose a safety of some sort, we're so afraid of, to lose a job or whatever, and Ketu comes, and there is a Ketu eclipse, and says, enough, you know, yes, you've been thinking about that, but you haven't had the strength to do it now, you're letting it go, and there is no choice, power stronger than you take over, karmic powers, and you have to drop that baggage that you've been carrying with you from past lifetimes, or from past experiences, or something that is no longer necessary in your life, it, it can almost be severed, just like Ketu and Rahu, the head of the dragon and the tail was severed by the gods, because they tried to be immortal, you know, the same way something can, sometimes even literally, when there is an eclipse of Ketu on someone's ascendant, or something, of the body, there might be a part of the body that gets severed, that's very extreme cases, hopefully not for you, you know, you know, it's happening on my ascendant, I hope I don't come with one leg less or something by the end of that, but it's about letting go of certain chapter of your life, and it's going to happen in a violent way, or it's going to happen because Mars is our willpower, and it's going to happen because we get angry, or because we're like, okay, now I have much more stronger willpower to do that, and Uranus is also about cutting connections, and about changing something in a powerful way, uh, in a sudden way, uh, so this eclipse is really what I'm going to focus on a lot in those predictions, but ending about karma, so the positive thing of it is, yes, we can lose something, we have to change totally the direction of something, let go of something, but we can also release old karma, that is heavy baggage, we can also release, uh, complete something, we, we can, if we've been burdened with a karmic disease, or with a karmic um, uh, unhealthy obsession or something, we might finally be able to detach from it in some way, it's a big karmic conclusion, and for every person it's in a different area of their life, just be careful for very extreme emotional reactions, because the moon is our feelings, it's being eclipsed, it feels as if kind of, some people might become hysterical, panicky around that time, but remember this is a period of big alchemical transmutation that's happening in your subconscious, the layers of your karma are being rearranged, are being cleansed, are being, you know, uh, uh, kind of like gods and powers above us uh, rearranging those things for us, and it's fearful, it's scary, it can feel confusing, it can feel ex exhilarating for <laughs> some people, you know, it is rare, but for some people they can, and after after that, 
I guess even in August it continues, but we'll speak about that in the August videos. Uh, and so, yes, I just want you to remember, yes, it will be an intense month for every person. These things can be happening, those big transformations that the snakes, Rahu and Ketu, the eclipses want to create in our life. Uh, the, the hiding of the light from us, you know, you the basically the sun and the moon, our consciousness, our feelings and our consciousness, when those two are blocked and hidden by uh, the eclipses, which is what Rahu and Ketu, these are the dragons that swallow the sun or the moon, according to mythology, we lose, darkness happens, it's like a metaphorical death and the new rebirth of light comes again, the light of the sun or the moon. So our life comes up out of the darkness emerges after the eclipses on a new level, on a new direction. So big transformations, guys. Ultimately, it can be used for good people that have been craving for transformations for a long time. It might be now for them. And of course, it's very hard to predict how exactly eclipse will affect a person. Even if I have your chart specifically, I can say more, more uh, who exactly will be will feel it the most if you have a planet exactly on those degrees you know this one is at four degrees Aquarius so anything and this one is at 20 degrees uh, Cancer uh, but again everyone will be affected somehow they have those degrees somewhere in their horoscope certain area of their life and I'd like you to check your ascendant sign for this prediction and of course your sun sign but always the ascendant sign is more important and of course not everyone will have those big transformations they eclipses twice a year every year but still let let's see where you can go through big changes big transformations virgo virgo ascendant virgo moon sun people where are the eclipses hitting you but they know it directly in your sign so you're kind of sheltered from all the action unless you have planets in cancer or in aquarius or in leo you know uh but still let's see specifically what houses maybe it's not gonna manifest exactly like i'm saying because if you have a planet in Aquarius or the nor or, or in uh, Cancer, then you'd feel that way more. But let's see in relation to Virgo where the eclipse is happening. Well, the first, the weaker eclipse, which is eclipse of new beginnings uh, and transformations, uh, is happening in your 11th house. And it's an eclipse that can give you something. 11 houses, like you can try to recreate yourself through new friendships. There can be some crisis in your friendships, the 11th house, or in your social environment, or if you're a member of some groups or clubs or member of some online groups and forums or whatever, there can be some crisis that happens. And because of that, it pushes you on a new direction, a new path to become a member of new such groups and to maybe uh you know start like a new you might decide yourself to start a new group or to start a new forum or to start where people the 11th house is the place where people get together with like-minded ideas to exchange ideas on the marketplace to exchange uh business ideas or ideas uh, or belief systems or to share things so this is a very communal house so in your community in your um how do i say in your it might be even to do not only with friends but in any part of if you're a member of any kind of communities there can be some crisis some big change some transformations uh, and this will continue for a couple of years because there will be eclipses in your 11th house for another year and a half or two i think uh virgos but the new karma can be created like a new exotic friend can appear um, a month or two before or after the eclipse new uh, exotic friends can start appearing because Rahu brings something exotic something different something foreign or maybe just becoming uh, venturing and being more daring daredevils Rahu makes us daredevils so we become more you become more venturing and daring in regards to the people you associate with and the people that you call your friends and you can say like screw you all I want new friends or I'm gonna create a new following 11 houses our followers is if you have an Instagram or whatever so you can you can decide to create new such group of people around new ideas uh, that, that are drawn to uh, new ideas so you can decide for example to uh, change your whole social um, setting <laughs> you know and uh, new beginnings as well as i said gives things some exciting new people that can be even a bit taboo breaking progressive like rahu or a bit uh 
batshit crazy <laughs> sometimes, like Rahu can be, uh, and very ambitious or very driven, uh, can become part of your posse or whatever, or can you, you want to become part of such a group of people, for example. There can be temptation that comes to you for friends as well, so be careful, that's the darker side of Rahu. Uh, and some kind of poisonous influences that come because Rahu is poisonous through friends uh, and through social environments or through acquaintances of any sort, social interactions. Um, but again, the ultimate thing is to give you something new so it can give you a new, uh, such uh, new friends, so it can give you new, becoming member of new groups, so it can give you new, 11th house is also the house of gains, so you can have some new exotic ideas how to become gainful. You might even be tempted tempted temptation to do something that is a bit you know too risky too taboo in order to create new gains i always advise people if possible to follow the rules of not harming anyone else and not to do illegal things of any sort but it can suddenly even raise your gains over the next few months and eclipse in the 11th house by introducing to you gainful associations uh, and it can in, in suddenly rise because Rahu gives Rahu eclipses give sudden rises through new beginnings uh, and through new acquaintances or connections and networks uh, into places that you way faster than expected. You know, especially which can lead to gainful uh, uh, collaborations, so that can lead to gainful. Uh, social economic goals of some sort so look out for those things actually it is a good thing to have a rahu eclipse in the 11th house is the house of gains rahu gives something material but again there can be some kind of crisis around those things initially so gains friends social connections the other eclipse virgo happens in your sixth house and um Okay, the six and that's the more powerful eclipse, by the way. And it's with Keto, it's about letting go of something. Well, the sixth house is your health habits. Are you uh, not moving and exercising? Are you uh, kind of uh, having an appalling lifestyle that affects directly your health? Well, you can lose something now here because of that. Because of unsavory, healthy practices, you can lose health or you can lose... Um, or money because you have to pay for health or something so it's asking you here to detach because Ketu is about letting go and detaching of unhealthy practices is asking you and actually it can help you for that as well you can make you like some kind of a be careful with your health you know when there is an eclipse in the sixth house and mars is retrograde there some kind of a sudden health issues can appear some problems some pains in the body that are more inflammatory that are sudden that shake you up you know, and because of that, the ultimate goal of Ketu is to separate you and to really and to disconnect you from unhealthy practices. Uh, and maybe you're stressing too much at work, and maybe and now something happens and you kind of become in a zone out state. Maybe your health goes down, or you because you're uh, some kind of a stress, mental stress happens to you that you kind of zone out. And Ketu wants to detach you through this eclipse, so you're like, screw it, I'm not gonna waste my health on that so it can have a very positive effect of uh and of letting go of certain attachments if you're six house is the house where we go and we want to fix things to make it happen uh to make things happen in a very specific way where we think that with our own specific efforts we can make something change or improve because six house is the house where we want to fix to improve to perfect something and now ketu says mm, this eclipse with ketu in the sixth house says the results of your efforts are not in your hands. You have to develop an attitude of detachment. Yes, you might have put a lot of efforts in something. You might in some work project or in perfecting something and having it the way you want exactly. But this eclipse happens and you're like, this is not in my hands. And this can make you very angry initially. It can make you throw fits. You know, it can make you suddenly like, like, Argh! Uh, but the ultimate goal of Ketu Eclipse in the sixth house is to detach you from the results of your actions. Do the best you can. Six house is about perfection in regards to work or in regards to your health or whatever. But the results of it, give it to God. If you adopt this kind of thinking, this kind of consciousness over the next you know, couple of months, you'll pass through this much easier. 
Yes, you'll do the best, but the results of your fruit, the fruits of your results are in God's hands. Uh, and not only that, but the sixth house is work. Some of you might have to let go of some work responsibility on the positive. Maybe some of you might leave a job. They might say, okay, I've had enough of this. And, or they might get fired, letting go, losing something. Six house is employment. Some of you might lose employees. Some of you might lose people that, you know, uh, connected to your work in somehow. Or some work project. Well, in crisis, it's usually preceded by crisis and transformation in that area by letting go of something. But it can also mean that you're completing some work project, wrapping up something, ending something. It doesn't mean it won't fail necessarily. You might just be ending it, completing it, and then you move on. Okay, it is about letting go, moving on. So you're completing, or maybe six houses, a house of debt. On a positive level, this can indicate the completion of a debt. And it might, it's not only monetary debt, it might be a debt um, that is kind of a karmic debt towards someone, you know, uh, as well in some way. So there might be the ending of and completion of some responsibility or duty or some service. Six houses, the service we give to take care of someone or to, uh, you know, to service, to, to, you know, so if you have some kind of a, or enslavement, the sixth house was enslavement, so maybe you are enslaved to servicing in some company or for some boss or whatever, and get to sixth house, eclipse goes there and this debt finishes for you. It can indicate ending of a job, uh, but yes, it is some kind of crisis, but you are being released from that karmic debt. And it might be also financially that there might be the releasing and letting go of some financial debt as well. Um, or completing some work project, as I said. Uh, but again, be careful that you don't anger, that you don't get angry, violent, fighting with competitors is the sixth house. People at your work environment, employees as well. Um, because this can escalate during this eclipse. Uh, and you might have to lose some kind of a uh, competition, sixth house is competition. You might have to step back and say, okay, give it. I give it to you. And the sixth house is also our en enmities enemies that we had oh my mortal enemy whatever someone that you have a bone to pick with and you've been picking it for some time and keto eclipse comes there and you either lose it and you move on or there is the completion and the ending of this enmity which can happen in a more positive way by you know reso just resolving somehow and detaching and uh, first some crisis happens and then you say okay i've had enough i'm not gonna fight for this with this person anymore i'm letting it go you know so these are very interesting and different ways that it can play out plus letting go of certain unhealthy habits as i said six houses diets and habits that we have to maintain the body but watch out your health again because in order for you to let go of unhealthy habits we only do it when things reach a crisis point often but it's about also six houses addictions and the it's about letting go of some addiction as well it might be addiction to uh, anything that is out of balance is the six house it might be not only physical addiction it might be mental emotional addiction to shopping or to overeating or or to substance of some sort so ketu might end um, for some of you the attachment to those things which is liberating and it's good sometimes but again as i said there's some more difficult sides to it as well to be aware of and on another level mercury is going retrograde in your 11th house uh you might be more absent-minded from the end of the month <laughs> mercury is your planet guys and you as virgo a Mer a mercury rules virgo when mercury goes retrograde you can just especially in the 12th house the 12th house is house where we miss details where we're more mystically inclined while mercury is all about attention to detail just like you are about making things everything is perfected it's almost like little bit things are more chaotic this month in regards to the results of your actions and if you want it to be in a perfect way or whatever, you might have to let go of that attachment. Plus, Mercury, your planet goes retrograde in the 12th house where things are out of your hands a little bit. 12th house is more karmic house. So things past karmas can come from the past for you to be worked out. Things and people from the past can reappear. Something that you've even forgotten about can start appearing for you from the end of the month. Uh, and be careful not to gossip. Mercury in the 12th house retrograde can indicate gossiping behind your back or you gossiping behind the back of others. Don't do such schemes behind other people's backs because it can backfire. You know, Mercury is retrograde and it's going to make 
some difficult aspects in August, so try not to do those scenes. But you might be working behind the scenes and completing something hidden from others. That can be a good thing for the Mercury retrograde period. And also, it can be like a broken telephone, Mercury in the 12th house. One says one thing, another misunderstanding tells you another thing, and you say, and some stupid gossip comes out, and at the end you look like an idiot, or at the end, like, uh, what well, the information came or totally twisted or distorted and came out sounding uh, very wrong. And also, if you're signing documents or papers or anything like that, be careful. In the 12th house, when Mercury is retrograde, mistakes from the past tend to arise and to show us. And be careful that you don't miss details and things like that. It sounds like an awful month. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, it's, it's We live through everything. Let's go to the best thing. Jupiter is going direct in your third house, guys. So if there were any complications in regards to relationships with siblings, with relatives, with neighbors, uh, this will start improving. This will start moving forward. If you've been making some plans to travel and you haven't been able, Jupiter moving, starting to move direct in your ninth, in your third house of travel and transportations will improve that. If there were some problems with your car or with some complications with transportation and how you move from one place to another, or if it required more efforts, now we start coming back to normal and improving. Uh, if there was some, um, if you've been working hard on acquiring certain skill, learning something, maybe now you'll see finally the results of your hard efforts and those skills will feel like more part of you and natural rather than having to use willpower and lots of concentration to use them. Third house rules, all those things. So thank you so much, Virgo, and I'll see you next month.